What's going on, beautiful people? You know what time it is. It's another beautiful Thursday, y'all. We about to go in. Got a money talk lined up. You know how it is. Beautiful people, Black Affluences Global. I'm currently in Washington, D.C. Let me know where you're tuning in from. We got another, another, another great conversation for y'all. Beautiful people today. I hope you got your pens. I hope you got your paper. Because it's about to go down. And today, we're talking about how you can avoid the money myths on social media that are out there everywhere. So, if you could just drop where you're tuning in from, I would love to know where we connected from. We got DC in the house. What's going on? My man Robert Dozier in the building. She is love, dropping love. Let's go. Beautiful black people. We talking about money. Is that Trinidad and Tobago in the house? We talking about money today. If, if you're not about your money, you're not trying to get your coins right, you might want to log off. I'm going to just say that right now. I got Fly. Even Fly's trying to join the live right now. Let's go. Let's go. Bay Area, what's going on? Canada, let's get it. got another great conversation for y'all beautiful people i'm not gonna lie for those of y'all who do not know me because sometimes i forget to introduce myself because i just be so excited to jump into the live and just interview my amazing guests my name is xavier snow and i'm the ceo of black affluence and i'm here to spread the word of entrepreneurship and financial literacy to the black community and today I'm joined by a very, very special guest. Let me turn the music down because, you know, when we talk that money talk, we got to get real focused. We got to really tune in to the conversation. So I want y'all to hear me and I want y'all to engage. So if y'all if y'all feel like some gems are being dropped, make sure that you drop that money emoji. You know, the one with the wings. Let them know that you feeling what we talking about, because these conversations are in abundance. We don't have enough money talks right now. And that's the whole goal of this platform is to normalize the conversations and to create a safe space for black millennials to discuss financial literacy and entrepreneurship. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get this live started with my man, the one Albert, the CPA. Let's get it. What's going on, King? How you feeling today? I'm good, brother. How about you? I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. Thank you for joining us, man. Thank you for having me. Can you hear me okay? Everything good? I can hear you great, man. I can hear you great. How you feeling today? Man, I can't complain at all. How about you? No complaints. No complaints, man. I'm excited to get started. We talking about the right stuff tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. So... I just want to set the stage, if you could, just share your background a little bit so people can kind of have a feel about who we're talking to tonight. Yes, sir. So my name is Albert C. Hurston Jr., or on here, Albert the CPA, from a small town in Alabama, Lynette, close to Auburn. I know y'all never heard of Lynette, Alabama. Went to school in Birmingham at UAB, graduated years ago. Now, I ain't even going to age myself like that. It, it almost flew off the tongue. I ain't going to do it. Uh, been in accounting about 10 years, been a CPA about five, and my experience just across all the different areas of accounting. So that's what makes it possible for me to run the kind of business I run, because I have experience across all the different areas. So I can run a company offering all the different areas or overseeing all the different areas. Mm. Somebody said Birmingham in the house. Yeah. UAB? Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, I'm actually flying down to Mobile uh, tomorrow, matter of fact. Oh, yeah? Yeah, on some random stuff. I got uh, I do videos, so I'm doing COVID outreach in the South with this doctor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
we're in Atlanta now, but but shoot, that ain't nothing. That's a skip in the heart from here. And that's what I'm saying. And I I love the accent, man. That's what I miss about the South. Y'all got the best accents, man. Well, I appreciate it. You know, <laughs> I uh, I think I spent all those years in corporate trying to trying to kind of mask it a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but no, I let it I let it fly a little bit more now. Hey, yeah, that's a whole nother conversation, man. The code switching and all that. That's a whole yeah. nother thing we can get into. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's just dive in, man, because, you know, something that stood out to me is, is the fact that you are one of the very few black CPAs that exist. Could you could you just kind of delve in on what that actually means to you and, and just in an overall bigger picture? Yeah, it means the world, man, because as you said, so of all CPAs, less than 1% of black. Mm. So, you know, a popular Warren Buffett quote, one of my most favorite Warren Buffett, Buffett quotes is, accounting is the language of business. Because it summarizes what we do so well. So when you start thinking about accounting in terms of the language of business, then you start thinking about the most qualified, high-level accountants, less than 1% of those are, look like you and me. Mm. It's a big problem. And then with that problem, it just shows itself over and over. So when you think mm. about accounting, you think old white male dominated, you think boring, right. you think all these things, but it ain't the accounting that's boring, it's the accountants, it's the people that normally gravitate towards it. You know what I'm saying? So when you get more people like me and the people I work with, people who actually of our culture, because mm. I'm a good dude, like it ain't no, you know, I done got all that code switch out of my, at this point, <laughs> It's out of here. But it's important because you want people coming up to see this as a viable option and not a stuffy, you mm -hmm. know, dominated by old white men type of field. It's important and small businesses need it. This is one of the most important things that businesses need. Mm -hmm. so when you see people like me who show up, who look like me, communicate like me, and then we can relate. You know, me and you, bro, this is our first time meeting. Yeah. We gonna have some stuff in common that don't even have to be said, just off the strength yeah. and you want that in your business sometimes because you know that's our problem they want that in their business that's why it's hard for us to get accepted into corporate america sometimes because they want that commonality too so mm. I'm really here building that for us or trying to i love that i love that so it sounds like you you move with purpose and yes, business. is that correct yes sir Everything I started this business because not only do small businesses not have access to the right type of accounting, but our businesses just get left behind, bro, because we don't know anything about accounting, first and foremost. And then when we learn about accounting, we hear about, you know, hire a bookkeeper or hire somebody to do your taxes. Mm -hmm. That's still in the complete picture of how accounting works in the business. You know, the first hire that a, a corporation or somebody who understands, the first hire they're going to make is a CFO. Mm -hmm. That's your leader of an accounting function. You know that if you're building anything, mm -hmm. you start with the leadership and the leadership yeah. helps you hire on down. But how will we know that? You know what I'm saying? How will we know that? And our businesses be missing that insight and strategy. We might have somebody tracking what we've done. We might have somebody preparing our taxes. But with all that insight and strategy, like how are we going to mm. save on those taxes? What these numbers actually mean, mm. that's how you're supposed to be using accounting. And it was our businesses that, you know, we just, we missing that. So I was like, when I start seeing, you know how it is, bro. When you start getting older, more of your friends start starting businesses and you start hearing the story. Right. You know, like really, you know, small business don't, they don't, <laughs> it just, it, it wasn't available. So our mission was started with just to change the way that small business owners think about accounting and tax. And that's what we've been on. I love that, man. I love that so much, man, because like you said, we've just been, <clears throat> a lot of it, a lot of it is lacking the information. A lot of it is, you know, lacking the capital. Um, but a, a lot of it, as we've seen with COVID and the vaccines is misinformation, yeah. right? And yeah. somebody who is a digital marketer who's constantly posting and, you know, working with other businesses and brands, I know the importance of having um, information that is valid. 
Yeah. And so right now we see the a rise of, of misinformation, especially as it relates to the business world and social media. Can you just share some of the like most outrageous business myths that you've seen online <laughs> with us? Yeah, man, it's, it's the wild, wild west. I know you see it as somebody who's competent in your field. It's the wild, wild west. Anybody can say anything. Any, anybody can say anything. Some of the most outrageous stuff that just pops up out of my in my mind. Mm. I made a list here. Let me see if I can find it on all my all my stuff. The first one is just that idea of being able to run your whole life through your business. Mm. The problem is all the stuff you see, it has like a sliver of truth in it. But the way that they say it isn't practical in, you know, real life. So uh, an even better one is, you know, it's really popular now to tell people that they can write off a G-Wagon. You can write off a G-Wagon through your business. Yeah, I've seen that. But you're going to ignore the fact that in order to write off a G-Wagon, you have to be able to afford a G-Wagon. Mm. <laughs> can you buy a G-Wagon for all intents and purposes as a write-off? Mm. Do you need that big of a write-off? What does that even look like for your business? Mm. Why would you invest in a vehicle for your business instead of investing in your team, your marketing, actual softwares, equip like actual stuff that can push your business for like it's stuff like that where you can kind of sort of get around to it, mm. but in all practicality, it's just outrageous. Like how many businesses could benefit more from a G Wagon than a higher marketing budget? Right. You know what I'm saying? If you mm. if you can write off a hundred and fifty thousand dollar car, you probably need to go ahead and hire your team, the team that you really want, up your ad spend because it's more. You that just means you need to spend the money. Mm. I want to my clients to spend the money on stuff that get them a return. Right. Like why would you buy a car? Now if you need to write off millions and you on that level, first off you ain't gonna be online looking for write offs like that, but. <laughs> You hopefully you have a team in place, but if you somebody like that, then maybe you can afford to quote unquote waste some money to show up to your clients in a G wagon. Mm. But it's also that S corporation thing. Mm. Like, go ahead and make the S selection to be taxed as an S corp. Like mm. that only works for certain businesses. It depends on a lot of different things, and the S corp is a lot more restrictive than the LLC. Mm. And LLC is probably the most flexible type of business entity that you can have as far as the types of write-offs, the hiring your kids, the doing all these things. Like I typically say, hold on to your LLC and just have solid tax strategy as long as you can. And then start talking about different types of election. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, bro, most of the stuff that I see, <laughs> mm -hmm. most of the things that I see online, it either be really too general yeah, or it really just be false. Now let me let me ask you something because um and I appreciate I appreciate the the depth of your response. Um I feel as though a lot of entrepreneurship in general has been glorified. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah. They I think the internet and it's mostly I you know, I don't knock anybody. Well, I'm about to knock somebody else. I'm about to say I don't do this and then do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. But, I don't want to knock anybody hustle, but a lot of that comes from people who are trying to sell those programs. Like the whole idea of, you know, working a lot less while making a lot more money. There's a lot of steps in between that. If you hire the right team, get the right processes. Yeah, you can do all that stuff, but you're not, it's going to be hard pressed for you to learn that in a six week course, you know, for, you know, for $3,000. And I think the idea of, easiness of entrepreneurship is just is just misleading this ain't easy like it's some hard days it's some stressful nights it's a lot of sacrifice and especially now if you have somebody who can give you a million to go run your business maybe it's less stressful but most people you had a day job you were saving up your money you were doing your your business on the side and then it started to grow at some point you had to take that leap where it didn't quite make sense but you felt like you can make it work. Mm -hmm. And bro, that's some of the most stressful stuff you can do. Especially, I'm married with three kids, right? So when I took that leap, 
bro, I'm thinking mortgage. I'm thinking hungry kids. I'm thinking, am I about to lose this wife I got over here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, That's but you don't see I'm, I know I'm going on, but you don't, don't see that. In, you don't see that in, in none of the Instagram clips and stuff like that. It's always make more money, do less. I'm going to show you how to make it easy. I'm going to show you how to. Like, this ain't easy. So you you right on point. Mm. Right on point. What's up, Atalia? I, I can see. I can't read your comment, but I see you. <laughs> yes, yes. So people just tuning in, we have the wonderful Albert Hurston. Hurston, excuse me. This mm. man been active in the financial field for over 10 years. He's a CPA representing less than 1% of black CPAs in America. This, this man is doing great things and he has decided to share his, his valuable time with us today. So if you have a question, please drop it in the question box so we can get to your questions towards the end of our conversation. Yeah, and again, bro, thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing the platform. Man, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm here for, man. So so let let's let's dive deep. Let's let's keep it move. Let's keep it moving because we we talked about some of the myths. We talked about some of the things that are misleading our culture and the people that want to get entrepreneurship. Now let's talk about some of the things that they can do as a small business owner to help mitigate the taxes that they are sure to income uh, come across, especially as their income increases. Definitely. So I'm about to give you the most frustrating answer that anybody can ever give. It depends. <laughs> it really, every single, it's something so specific. You know, like you're a digital marketer. Your business is so different from another person who does exactly what you do mm. that it just has, you have to hire professionals. You mm. have to hire competent pros that look at your business specifically to find opportunity. Like mm -hmm. that's the only real way to do it. Cause you know, everything else is too general. Cause even matter of fact, I said, what's up to Ataya? Ataya is another CPA. Mm -hmm. She's solid. Her and I do similar things. I'm sure we have similar, separate go different goals. So we need different strategies, different plans. So that's typically always going to be my thing. Mm -hmm. But with um, places to start is know your numbers. Like, know what your margin is. Know what you're actually up against. Mm -hmm. Like, pay people to tell you what your current tax liability is as you're going through the year. Because you can start, you know, setting aside. You can start building in strategy. I'm going to always say marketing first. Like, when people need to up their spending, I'm going to say invest in things that bring you a return. I'm big on income, income, Lord, deferring incomes and accelerating expenses. Okay. What that means is if you can take the expense at the end of the year, if you need to write it, write, write stuff off instead of taking it at the beginning of next year. And if you can defer income from the end of the year to next year, you know, just the difference in getting paid and doing stuff in two weeks can be the difference in, I don't think I'm explaining that, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's bringing expenses forward, pushing income back. Right. It's these retirement accounts. Retirement accounts are a major key. Like, but the idea of keeping the money just to spend, mm. you got to do something strategic with the money. Mm. Like, you're not just going to have more profit and Uncle Sam going to just be cool with that. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of pay defer payment to yourself by putting it in the right retirement account. Mm. Or you can just be prepared for what the tax bill going to be. Or you can just spend it on things that actually help to push your business forward in the future. Those are my real, like, tax tools. Everything else is... It's just too specific to be general about it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Hey, y'all can y'all can DM him for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. My man as well. I'm sure he'll be happy to to assist you in your business needs. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, one thing that you mentioned that I do want to touch on because people that know me, they know that I'm really big on mindset. And without mindset, I mean, you're liable to just be dragged anywhere right yep. so my question to you is how do we begin to develop a delayed gratification in order like you said to reap the rewards at the end like how do we go how do we go about making that mindset shift to delayed gratification when 
we're in a society that's so used to having things right away. And, you know, if I make some money now, I, I feel like I should spend it now. Like, yeah. have to wait to retire, put it in retirement. What do you, how do you, what do you say to people like that? Yeah, it's always, I'm big on mindset as well. Almost every book that you can see back here in the background. Yeah. Once you learn, it's funny, once you're in business a couple of years, you learn the only way to grow a better business is to grow a better leader. Mm. So all you got to do is, if you work on yourself and your mindset, that's going to affect everybody who touches you. So I'm big on mindset as well. Yeah. But as far as your question, it's all about perspective, bro. Like, you have to be able to step back and take a big picture view of everything. Because social media, you know, it's highlight reel. It's showing the best of the best. It's showing, you know, it's easy for me. I've been running Right Choice for over two years now. It's easy for me to show you, oh, I got all these clients. We doing well. We saving people all this money. Like, you don't see posts on my social media about when I was scared about the mortgage. You know what I'm saying? Like, you think I'm going to get on here and be like, oh, man, I don't know. I probably should have kept my job. Like, no. I, I figured that out. So now I'm like, yeah, all you got to do is stay. You know, it, it's easy to show that other side. But the, yeah. the true perspective of it is this gratification that we're experiencing now, this six-figure company that I run now mm. started with an investment in two now. It was started with the idea that it could become this and the sacrifices necessary to make it become this mm. were necessary. Or, you know, ha they had to happen. Mm. Or what I'm going to do, I'm going to let my people keep going out of business. I'm going to let people, small business owners, just keep on not knowing about accounting. I'm going to just, because, you know, I can go to corporate America. They love to, they love to use the bright black CPAs to fill their quota because we're going to come in, we're going to deliver, and we're going to give them their diversity number. So I'm going to keep playing that game. They're going to pay me well for that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're going to give me six figures to, you know, go make their companies better. Mm -hmm. While my company still out here with the wrong information, the wrong solution mm. the wrong type of professional so mm. it's just you got to you got to be able to see things as bigger than yourself so it's a perspective thing it's a discipline thing because it's something real to that bro if i make you yeah. know if you hit the lottery right the first thing you're gonna think what i'm gonna do with the money you're not gonna think about taxes you're not gonna think about <laughs> you ain't gonna think about tomorrow you ain't gonna think about that mm. but you have to be disciplined to hold yourself accountable to do that because that's the only way to have that's the only way to build something that will continue to grow. Something that's sustainable is the word I'm searching for. Something sustainable. You got to build something and with a big picture perspective in order to build something sustainable. Mm. So and I'm, I'm going to go a little bit on script because I know I, I sent you some questions. Um, okay. but I, I'm curious to know because, you know, obviously in the black community specifically, um, yeah. we don't see entrepreneurs in our in our daily life. Like, unless it's on social media or the news, you know, we don't necessarily see what if it, what it's like to be a successful entrepreneur. So, mm -hmm. like, how do we go about um, developing a network so that we can become, you know, more comfortable? In, in our business? Like, what are some actionable steps that we can take to, to build that network? Yeah, that's a hard one, bro. That's, yeah. that's a really hard one. That's a really great question. Mm. I can tell you what we've kind of done. Okay. It's been, so, you know, I'm an accounting nerd, so I'm a researcher just by trade. Like, I'm going to research enough to know enough about enough to know if you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> so, it's, I don't know if that made sense, but I'm sure you you know what I mean. I got you. But it's just finding people who actually take it seriously. Finding people who actually, because you can look at somebody and tell if they more self, if they more about they self, mm. or if they more about a mission, a value, or goals. Mm. When you start finding black people who see a bigger purpose than themselves, because when you start seeing that, you just support that. And most of the time, you'll start building, like, the most beautiful relationships. Like, people that I'm cool with now, you know, I'm married with kids. I don't talk to nobody every day. <laughs> but the people that I'm coolest with now, it was the people when we were trying to figure out, okay, who can I trust? Who can I kind of be around? Who are really trying to build businesses? Because, you know, a lot of people get in this to just make money. Right. And everything else is secondary. So, you know, your business secondary, <laughs> the mission 
the black community, everything is secondary, secondary because I'm trying to come up. Like, mm. I don't knock those people like that because, I mean, you got your family. Right. But I stay away from people like that because people like that ain't trying to build nothing sustainable. They trying to get in and get out. Mm. So real, like, actionable steps is just really taking your time, man, keeping stuff into perspective, seeking out that energy that you want. Like, Mm. Bro, my clients, like my client base, like we we starting to build like this beautiful energy. Mm. Like it's almost like family. Like we get on, we talk about your financials first and foremost. Then we start talking about how the kids doing and blah blah blah. Then we start talking about just business in general. Yeah, and it's, just, it's like like culture, right? You create a vibe because mm. you really do attract what you put out. That's why it's so. That's why mindset is so important. Yeah. You have to show up and know who you are. And you have to continuously be working on getting better. Like, I got a, these, this is my list of books. I'm, I don't know. Let me see. Okay. <laughs> this is my list of books that I'm about to read now. My real bookshelf over there. But every book up here, bro, it's either, it's either accounting or mindset. Wow. And I'm reading from, from left to right, right? I'm working on Good to Great now. Good to Great talks about, you. have you read it? The mindset, the just it really just a mindset difference between great companies and what they did differently, and the, you know, then good company. Yeah. Then I got the role less stupid. One of my mentors slash coaches talked about that. It's really just about I ain't read it yet, but it's about making the simple, easy solution. I mean, decision. It's doing what makes sense. Mm. So when you start living your life like that and doing that, you're gonna attract people who doing that. You know, like the thing you build in here, yeah. you you making voices like mine bigger. So you going to attract the crowd who interested in voices like mine. It's only natural. So I ain't chicken, but I can only imagine some people hearing us. They following me now. They probably like, oh, yeah, this this a brother that blah, blah, blah. Because, yeah. you know, our energy going to connect. I could tell from from when you were playing the music at the beginning. I was <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, see, me and bro, after this, me and bro might need to have another conversation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Another but, couple of hours. Yeah, but see, it ain't, and I know that's not actionable still. Yeah. But it's more of a mindset, discipline, like, just attracting that energy type of thing. Mm. That's, that's that's just how I live, bro. Like, mm. it's just walking, it's walking in your purpose, maybe? Like, yeah. figuring out who you are, what yeah. you believe, what you'll stand for, and actually living that. Because yeah. you know... Like corporate America, bro. It we try to pretend like it don't have a huge impact on us and how we, like, bro. I didn't even have no fade when I was in corporate. I was scared to get braids when I was younger. I was scared to, you know, all these different things because I was afraid of what people were gonna think about me. Cause mm -hmm. you know, and that ain't even something that should be on my radar. I yeah. should be showing up to work trying to be the best accountant I can be. Yeah, I'm talking about my haircut. I'm talking about. Making sure my pants ain't too baggy, making sure that I get my voice right so they don't feel intense. Like it's all these different things, and bro, that ain't even got nothing to do with who I am, what I do, what I bring to the table. So once you, you know, when you start getting older, yeah. I'm in my mid thirty. So you know, once you start getting here, you pretty much just say, "Man, I ain't doing that no more." And then you start attracting people. Like <laughs> you start attracting what you know what what women always say. You start attracting who your tribe is. You start attracting like minded people. Yeah, and you miss out on so many like-minded people, but just not being yourself is is the craziest thing. Man, so much of that is like so much of it. In my opinion, is we've been generationally passed on to just you know endure, right? And I think it it just come it goes back to even before slavery. But, you know, we've been conditioned, in my opinion, to just just take what we've been given. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to thrive when you fight to survive. Mm. Yeah. I don't know where I got that from, but I ain't make it up. <laughs> I don't know who made it up. I need to give proper credit. But, yeah, you know, it's a lot of truth to that. It's hard to really win when your mindset is one of just trying to make it. Because, you know, and you can see it in business, bro, the thing that gets you to your first six figures, Mm -hmm. It's not the thing that's going to make you a seven-figure company. It's a new mindset. It's new skill. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you start, you kind of got to work your butt off to get it out of the mud and really just hustle. But when you get to a certain level of clients, you can't do that because that's not scalable. 
Now you got to become the decision maker, the delegator, the per the good trainer, the person who is cloning themselves throughout. And you know that's hard for people who work hard because these people don't care about your business like you. <laughs> so they're not they not going to work as hard as you. So it's a mindset work that needs to be done there. Mm. And you know, like you said, that preconditioning, because yeah. anything I want, I feel like I had to work for it. Mm. Anything I want, I feel like I had to work hard. And if I wanted more, I had to work harder. Mm. But that gets you to a certain level. At a certain point, it ain't about what you do. It's about what you know and how you use what you know. It's, almost, it's like rich people with money. Mm. Like rich people don't be saving and budgeting and blah, 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 as much as they be investing and trying to figure out how to get the return. And mm. it's just different. So, yeah, I took what you were saying and alluded on it. But, yeah, it's a lot to that, bro. Like our subconscious conditioning, like yeah. the thing. That's why, man, I'm going to keep on saying mindset since you introduced it. <laughs> but you have to work on that subconscious, you know, consciously. Yes. It's stuff that, it's stuff that you believe in your mind that you would never admit that you believe. Amen. And it, just, it operates in your subconscious. So you have to, you know, you just have to really check yourself on that because we condition, bro. Like you can't be, it'll be hard pressed to be a black person in this country and not have some stuff that you have to work out mentally about loving yourself, what you believe about yourself, what you believe yeah. about your people. Because, you know, bro, like we, we kind of starting to believe that you can't find good black service providers like every time something go wrong with a black service provider you know you hear it that's why i can't work with black folk bro all small businesses make dumb mistakes yeah. and all small businesses are figuring it out but when it's us and our people a lot of time like it's like all right i'm giving you one chance if you mess it up i ain't you know it's like this thing and that's how we feel about ourselves think about how the world feels about us and I don't know who fought. Well, you you know, you can always say <laughs> who fought it is. But at this point, I yeah. don't know how we could look at each other and not love on each other, bro. Because mm -hmm. we made it through some stuff, especially like successful black folks who came from nothing. Like, we don't need to be competitive with one another, bro. We need to love on each other. Mm -hmm. that's, why, that's why I love this movement with therapy yeah. coming into it. And, you know, because it's mindset, bro. It's protecting your mind. It's so I need to do taking care of your body, like yeah. living with your brother. Like you, when you said, you said, what's up, King? I said, what's up, brother? Yeah. You know, 10 years ago, bro, yeah. when we were younger, you know, we might would have said to each other, like, what's yeah. up, my, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's just subconscious. That's a, t a term of endearment. Yeah. The most, the t most terrible word that you can call somebody in this country, that's, that's, I'm endearing. That's just subconscious program of what we feel about each other. In my brain, I don't want to get too far off into what I think about that, but bro, it's just crazy. Like I don't see how you could look at another person that looked like you and, and not give them the benefit of the doubt of everybody. Mm. Did that did that make sense? I went off on a crazy tangent. Nah, bro. See, that's how I know we're connected. <laughs> I'm that dude. Like I pretty I'm pretty sure I get it from my dad, but I tend to go on these these circles but it'd it be it'd be logical rants you know what i'm saying like, be I like you feel me and you know i think that the main thing is just like what was i gonna say i'll be forgetting that's one of the things i'll be i'll be so intent on listening i'll be forgetting what i'm gonna say my, that's my bad i talk so much <laughs> i probably introduce, i introduce so many new ideas <laughs> right I do the same thing. I do the same thing. But, you know, everything that you were saying about the subconscious, understanding, you know, how we're influenced is just, it, it's something that we, we need to be aware of at all times. Yeah. And, and yeah. What, I, what I tell my girl um, is like, as black people, we already have the world against us. As soon as we leave our door, so it's even that much more imperative that we are intentional with our time and with our decisions and the people that we let into our lives because that's what's influencing our, our behaviors, you know? Yeah. You know, it's like, and it's funny, like, when you be growing up, we have all these little simple things, like, if you hang with, with four of anything, you'll become the fifth one, and, you yeah. know, like, don't work hard, work smart, like, 
And then you start getting older and start getting experience and you start being able to put like perspective around this stuff. Mm -hmm. But bro, time the only thing we ain't gonna get back. I can lose everything. I'm 34. I can lose everything I don't work for right now. And by the time I'm 40, it's a good chance that I could get it back. Mm -hmm. But if I sit here and waste my time between 34 and 40 on people I shouldn't be around. I'm a married man. I shouldn't be around men who still like single and dating and doing stuff like that. Not all, not in that type of cut. You, you can have any kind of friend. You know what I'm saying. I but know. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be in a club with three single dudes who trying to pull women. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be a scene I put myself in. Like I shouldn't be around dudes who figuring out how to cheat on their wives. Not if I'm committed to being faithful. I shouldn't be around dudes who don't take care of their kids. If I'm trying to be the best dad I can be. And that ain't a judgmental thing. It's just an energy thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you want to surround yourself around what you want to become more of. And it's funny. This We having a really big mindset conversation. But once you get the mindset right, the money going to come because the decision making becomes so simple. So all the stuff I'm telling you about mindset and perspective, that's how I run my company. Because, mm. you know, and if you run your company the right way, building the company that you want, it's just like life. Matter of fact, it's a microcosm of life. Okay. If you put the type of discipline, the type of practices, the type of systems in your life to become like me, the kind of man I want to be, mm. like surrounding myself with the right group of friends or nobody. <laughs> like not, you know, if, if you can't find what's good for you, be confident enough in yourself to just pick nobody. And same okay. thing with your business. Yeah, same thing with your business. If you can't find the right accountant to fit not only the competence test where they know what they're talking about, but also the comfortability and vibe test where you don't mind talking to these people, mm. like, figure out, like, that's something. Don't just hire anybody. Mm. Like, in your business, you want to build people that, I mean, you want to build with people that's going to fit your culture. Like, the money mm. is, like, leaves on the branch. If you focus on if you focus on the main thing, what you actually good at, the money gonna come. And even when the money come, it's just a tool to do more things and make more money. And it's all that. That's what it is. But all of it start with the right leader, with the right mindset, who's done the work on that subconscious. And if he mm -hmm. black, who done try to get over this programming that we have that make us, you know, really hate ourselves and anything like us. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it all kind of I wasn't expecting the conversation to go here, especially not based on a, how we get to hear from the question we start, <laughs> the question we started with got us here. But all of it's intertwined, bro. If you yeah. want to build a better company, you got to build a better yourself if you're the leader of that company. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely all connected. Um, you know, business, character, um, you know, the decisions that we make, it all it all connects. And it actually leads me to my next question, which is about the scams that have arisen due to COVID-19. Um, I'm sure you've seen people that have gotten caught up on, you know, the loans and all the craziness. Um, can I'm just curious, could you share maybe some of your stories and what some of the red flags that people can look out for when it comes to dealing with situations that may be a potential scam. Yeah, it, it's kind of, you remember just a few minutes ago, I was saying about the stuff we used to hear as kids. Like if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Right. Like think about how many people quote unquote bought PPP loans. You can't go buy government funding. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? What I can't come to you and be like, hey, for $2,000, I can get you a $20,000 loan. That's just too good to be true. Mm -hmm. So there is a way to, it's, like I was saying earlier too, like it's a way to qualify for that if you're running your business the right way and you got your financials in order. They were giving the money away. It was easy to qualify if you were just doing what you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But people was out here selling them. You know, people going to prison. People don't stop hearing about hearing about it now because it ain't the top thing to talk about. People going to prison over them, them PPP loans. Wow. Like, I don't know what the IRS is going to do moving forward with examining them, examining them. But in order to qualify, you had to submit tax documentation, right? Yeah. And if you submitted fake tax documentation, guess what happens when you go and fill out your taxes next year with the right documentation? You don't think they're going to 
You don't think they have no no process, no procedure to say, oh, this ain't the same as this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you have to just kind of have your eye. Like, if it's too good to be true, it's just too good to be true. So if I think you should always shop around to. Like, mm-hmm. anything you're doing in your business, mm-hmm. I think you talk to two or three people about it. And right. then you can start to get, like, an idea of what it should sound like. Like, before I hire anybody, I talk to at least three people. Because, you know, yeah. there's going to be differences between all three. Yeah. But there should be some commonality. And if two of them are saying one thing and one of them saying something different, I might talk to a couple more. And if all four of them are saying the same thing and one person saying something different, yeah. you know, it's easy to discern mm. who just, you know, who don't know what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. So really, oh, discernment is a good word. That is a good, yeah, yeah. about to key in on that too. Yeah, you just, you just got to be careful and you got to pay attention. Like, I love the skill that you have for listening because I'm working on that. I talk so much that I'm working on listening more intently and I'm starting to notice, you know, like I said, with energy, I'm starting to notice that you've, you've been very deliberate about listening to what I'm saying mm-hmm. and I'm seeing the work you're doing. And, you know, that's motivate me. Like, no, nah, now nah, I need to listen to him when he talk. Like, it's just. <laughs> we feed up each other, man. We learn from each yeah. other. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. Um, You know, one of the things that I want to touch on personally as, a, a, you know, 28, looking at 29, arms length from 30, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm looking at you know, potentially starting my own family and, and moving into that, that mindset. Um, so I'm just curious, is there, is there any tips or, or advice that you would have in terms of being financially prepared, not just for, you know, men, but like people in general that are looking to move in that direction? Do you have any financial advice? Yeah. Like, well, again, I hate to keep answering every question like this, but it, it depends on your partner. Like, and this is a personal thing. Like, I think your partner, the person that you choose to build with, is probably the most important decision you can make in your life. Like, the person that you make the real commitment with. Because, you know, the only way it lasts is with the, a real commitment, like a real partnership, a real 50-50, this is how it's going to work, me and you, blah, blah, blah. Financially, bro, it just has to, it's case by case. Mm-hmm. Like, I think men are never going to really feel like we financially ready. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just something in our sight. I don't know if it's tied to our testosterone. I don't know what's wrong with us on that, bro, but we never going to feel like we successful enough. And then, too, you know, it's a part of FOMO. It's like, you know, if you're most successful, you get access to a different level of women and blah, 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 too. That's I think that plays a part in our mind. So we want to get to the highest level we can get to mm-hmm. before we start settling down. Yeah. But I what I learned is if you pick the right person, bro, you get to that level so much faster. Like oh, my, my wife, we met in college, right? We had our son. We were sophomores in college. Like I always joke and say the first thing I did when I got on UAB campus was get Lauren Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, with that comes like, we got to, now we got to figure this out. Like, are we going to, we going to drop out? What are we going to do? So, bro, we just, our lives just became like this. We grew up together. Like, there is no way that I could have accomplished everything that I accomplished without her always having my back. That's why anybody who follow me on social media, anybody who know Albert the CPA, they know Lauren is always just off camera. If you're wondering now, Lauren is right here, always. (laughs) I don't know where where our kids at, but (laughs) she right here. But no, nah, you know, the older one from college, he watched the other kids now. So it worked out. But smart man, but it's, um, it's that, bro, is choosing that right partner. Because once you choose that right partner, everything else just becomes everything else. The main thing is the main thing. Like financially, don't really matter so much because y'all going to figure it out. And you can be confident in that when you got somebody who you know got your back. Now, practical tips is to, you know, not waste your money. Yeah. Not like, <laughs> not make it you know, make big picture decisions, like invest smart. Like I like, if people like to get into stocks, 
I don't like to start with individual stock. I'm not an invest. I'm not an investment professional or nothing like that. But like, start with some of the the um ETFs and funds where you you get a batch of stocks in one, and then like you just do responsible stuff, bro. I know that didn't answer your question, but yeah, no, you it, it did it did personally because I I definitely feel as though um the, the like the first thing you said. The woman that a man chooses is the most important decision that he'll ever make. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yeah. I stand by I I'll die on that hill. Like, <laughs> I'll die on that hill, bro. Like the the most important thing I ever did was marry who I'm married to. Mm. And then the most important decision I ever made was when we had our son, right? I just used to do this mental thing. I was like 20, 21, 22. I used to always be like, I'm going to become the kind of man I want him to grow up to be. Mm. Like I used to always tell, I was I was rapping at the time. I used to always put that in my rap. <laughs> like like that was that was my thing, bro. Like I was going to become the kind of man I wanted him to be. Cause you know, I was young, I was lost. I ain't know who I was was. I, I ain't know who I was. I ain't know what was important. Mm. I ain't, you know, I ain't have the the guidance growing up, we ain't got to dive into that because you already probably knew that about me just by proxy of looking at me. Mm. Like, you knew there's some things missing there. And when you decide, okay, this is what I came up in. I'm not bringing my kids up in that. Mm. I'm going to actually give this boy a real chance. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to become that guy that I wish I had. And I don't know where I got that level of perspective, but thank God I did. But those are the single most important thing. Mm. And that is it. Like having a woman who, bro, I love old school cars, right? I've been wanting to box Chevy since I was 16. Having a woman who's like, no, nah, don't get that yet. Do this, and then we can get that. No, nah, don't get it yet. Do this, and then we can get two. No, nah, don't do that. Do this, and then we can get the one you really want. Like having a woman that, you know, it was, matter of fact, a better one is, I think I heard Bun B on like Breakfast Club. He was like, he was finna buy a chain, and his wife was like, why don't you buy a property? Because you buy a property, you can go buy two chains. But you could also marry a woman who say, well, give me the matching chain. Now, this ain't no slight to note. This ain't no slight. This ain't no judgment. Right, right. But you know, just a minor decision like that, somebody who really care about the big picture version of who you become and what and all that, mm. that's priceless, bro. It's priceless. And I ain't going to get on. I'm not going to grow to a level where I start acting like I don't remember who had my back before I had my back. That's another thing. Come on with it, man. Yeah. Bro, how did this turn this turn from a money conversation, didn't it? <laughs> hey. Hey, money, mindset, motivation, man. It's all one and the same, man. We yes, sir. Yes, sir. Talks, man. We gotta have these talks. Yes, sir. Definitely. So while I still got you, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab some of these Q and A's. I'm gonna have you answer them if you don't mind. Yeah. All right. So we got reflect your light. She's asked, "What is the benefit of a small business having a CPA?" Well, to to hit the CPA piece, a CPA is a certification, right? So that just means a high level accountant. So a CPA is just a designation. So what it means is you are working with somebody who's a competent professional. So the true benefit of working with somebody like that is understanding what kind of CPA you need first, what your business needs are. And then working with a CPA gets you to a really competent professional professional in that because you can have a CPA who focuses on taxes. Now, the benefit of working with a CPA who focuses on taxes is they'll help you manage your tax bill. You can have a CPA who focuses on audit. That's a public company thing that pretty much means that, okay, this company's financial statements apply abide by all the rules. I can provide reasonable assurance that this company financial statement abide by all the rules. You can have a CPA who runs like a CFO thing. Like that's what I do. We run an outsourced accounting department business. So I'm more of a CFO. And, what, and working with somebody like me and my company, it helps you understand the strategy. It helps you understand what the numbers mean about your business. It helps you understand the tax implications of the decisions that you're making. 
And it's really important for a small business to have that stuff. It's typically, so a lot of times small business owners think that they too small for the high level stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's partially true. It, you don't need it the way that it's done in big companies, but you need all those functions. Like you need to know what your numbers are saying about your business or how you're going to make decisions. Like you got to make your decisions based on the numbers, based on the data. Like, we, and you know, for all intents and purposes, we all know that, but in practice, like it ain't, it ain't drilled into our head as much, but you got to know your numbers. And not only do you need to know your numbers, you need to know what your numbers are telling you about your business. Sometimes your numbers be screaming, stop, like stop now. <laughs> Cause a good example and I'm going to keep on going and reflect your light. But a good example of this is when businesses get a loan, right? So you get a loan and you have all this cash in your account. And you start making decisions based on that cash in your account as opposed to what your income and expenses are saying. You don't make expense, you don't make decisions based on cash. Mm -hmm. You make decisions based on income. Because if you look at income versus expenses, you don't ever have to worry about your cash because it's only going to go up. And when it's going down, you will know it's going down because you have more expenses than income. But if you make decisions based on your cash and you don't focus on what that income and expenses are doing, like your business can very well be running inefficiently or you could be headed right out of business and not even see it coming until you run out of that cash. Mm. And that's what you see a lot in small businesses. Small businesses make decisions based on cash. As long as they got cash, they be spending it. Mm. But when, when you spend all that cash and you can't go forward with understanding, like, okay, so what about next month? What about the next month? What about the next month? That's how a lot of businesses go out of business because they just don't have, they don't have the stuff in place to ensure that they're making solid decisions. And reflect your light. Let me know if I didn't answer your question accurately because sometimes all I turn into all passion. Like I, because <laughs> I really care so much about this stuff. That I can sometimes go on tangents about why what I what I'm saying is important, but the benefits it really depends on what your business needs, and then it comes down to finding the right professional for it. Because every in every case you don't need somebody who's certified as a CPA. In every case, now like I say, that CPA means that you're working with a competent professional who has passed a really hard test, who has a certain level of experience. So you can almost rest assured that they're competent, but even some CPAs are lazy. You can be, you can, two things can be true. <laughs> you can be a really smart, competent person who ain't finna work. So in that case, you want to make sure that you're hiring somebody who actually appreciates what you need and is focused on solving your problem. Man, my brother is thorough. He I talk so much, bro. You gonna get, you gonna get that answer though. <laughs> you gonna get the answer. Let's so let's jump to the next question before they kick us off the live. Champagne God Four says, for a product business, is it better to get an LLC or trademark? And how are you? How would you rate LegalZoom for getting started? Well, a LLC and a trademark are two completely different things. So, LLC is liability protection for your company. What that means is the things that happen within your company are separate from you as an individual. So if something goes wrong in your company, somebody sues you, they sue your company. If you don't have that LLC protection, something goes wrong in your company, somebody sues your company, now they got access to everything in your company, your house, your car, all that stuff. So the LLC affords you that liability protection. It's like a line of defense in between you personally and your business. A trademark is more of a legal term that just protects your right to use certain things. I don't want to dive into that because I'm not I'm not an attorney, but it pretty much protects your right to your brand name. I, I think it is. I don't, matter of fact, I don't want to get into explaining something I don't understand, but it's like because for some reason, trademarks and what's the other one? Trademarks and um copyrights they kind of run together for me sometimes yeah but a trademark is more of a legal protection for a name i think it is or like your right to do certain stuff and a llc i know what this is this is liability protection for to protect you personally from dealings of your company thanks 
And I should know what a trademark is, too. I just don't. I try to stay in my lane as much as I can. I talk this mindset talk like I'm a therapist or something, but, <laughs> hey, but that's they're, they're completely different things. And we have both. Our name is trademarked, and, of course, you know, we have our liability protection. I have a quick follow-up on that question. Um, yeah. I was watching I was watching a Patreon video of one of my uh one of the YouTube guys I follow and he was interviewing a tax guy and I think he was making three hundred thousand dollars or so. It was a CPA, I believe he's a CPA. Mm-hmm. So it may be it may be a little different for the everyday person, but he had his business structure where he had his S Corp as like the main business and then he had I guess his like YouTube company was an LLC and then investments was an LLC like and then he was he was able to have a lower tax rate on I guess his investments and his other company because the way he structured it he wasn't being fully taxed as a small business um I may have I may have misspoken on how I explained that but does that sound like something that that would work or or what do you what are your advice See, what bro has done is he pretty much took my advice from earlier. He has created a very specific solution for his very specific situation. Okay. So a lot of times people create multiple entities Mm -hmm. so that the newer entity that may not be making as much money can help offset some of the, some of the income and profits from the other entity. It's like the holding company structure It's more, you know, it's really popular with like rental property and not, um, like real estate and stuff like that, where you have all these different properties in different LLCs and then they kind of roll up to a holding company. Mm-hmm. That's more of how that process works. But an S Corp is going to give certain businesses certain tax advantages. And then the different liability protection from having the different LLCs is pretty much just separating all of the different businesses and then using those businesses as kind of a conglomerate to offset and strategize tax wise. That's a it's a little bit of a complicated thing. Yeah. So it's very specific to him, I'm sure. Yeah. But no, you need to under when you start getting up into the hundreds of thousands of dollars and you having multiple income streams. Yeah. That's the level of specificity you need to start focusing in on. Like how do we do this stuff? So I'm sure bro had a good professional to tell him if you do yeah. this, this happens. But no, that's very it's a lot of merit to that. And we, um, yeah, like me and my clients, we talk through all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you, you've you been dropping gems all night, and I just want to say thank you times a thousand for Ooh. sharing your energy, your vibes, your wisdom. Like, I'm truly, I'm truly grateful and humbled by your expertise, and I, I really want to appreciate you. Can you just share how we can connect with you and what's some of the projects you have going on right now? Sure, man. Well, and I'll say it again. Thank you for having me because you created an environment where we took a simple money conversation to the real, because that's the real stuff, right? The mindset. So I appreciate you for creating this environment, bro, and having me in it. But as far as contacting me here on Instagram, I'm Albert, the CPA. Um, we're also Right Choice Accounting Solutions on Instagram, Right Choice on Facebook. Um, Albert C. Hurston Jr. on LinkedIn. We neglect our Twitter account grossly, but I'm Albert the CPA on there. We need to, we're going to have to start paying attention to Twitter. And that's pretty much it. If you're interested in kind of learning how my business can help your business, our website is rightchoiceaccountingsolutions.com. If you're interested in talking with a member of my team and that sort of thing, you can email us at info at rightchoiceaccountingsolutions.com. If you want to make sure that we're really out here doing what we say we're doing, you can Google us. The reviews are going to back up everything I said about the communication, the vibe check, to make sure that we're competent. And that's pretty much it. But Albert, the CPA here, this is where we we have a lot of fun on Instagram. Y'all, we, we be playing. We be making memes. Lauren runs it, and you know it's a collaborative thing. But Instagram is where you get to see the whole picture of Albert, the CPA, the CEO of a company. The rest of it is a little bit more formal, like right choices, marketing, you know, and that sort of thing. Everything you ask me is at least two minute answer, right? <laughs> hey, hey, you came with it. You came with it, man. And like I said, I wholeheartedly appreciate it. 
I hope that we can have another conversation down the line. And I just want you to enjoy the rest of your night with your family. You too, man. And again, thank you. You building something huge here, bro, because I don't think I've cut loose on a, have I? I don't think I've done this yet.